Hi, my name's Simeon Weedle. I'm from Brighton in England. I've been tapping for just under 20 years. Um, I actually started um, with my mother. She took me to uh, a tap class, which was actually for old ladies. Um, <laughs> so I fitted right in. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess um, everything just grew from there, really. I grew up in Brighton. Um, it's my hometown. I moved to London to train as a dancer and then I travelled the world as a tapper and uh, I've come full circle back to Brighton and now I work in London in the West End in Stomp. I actually had the, the, the chance of meeting some hoofers, some improvisational dancers um, backstage at the Bloomsbury Theatre in London <clears throat> back when I was still training to be a dancer and um, you know they introduced me to the idea that um, in fact in this form of tap, um, you're making it up as you go along. So what's happening really is you have a conversation between the conscious and the subconscious brain. You would hear the combination in your head and then play it through your feet. So it's the musical approach to tap dance. And um, I think I was about eight, 17 or 18 years old and um, I just... I saw these guys and I couldn't believe it, um, and I just wanted to be one of them. So this is my living room. I've got my drum kit set up, the music, and right over here is my tap board, which just screws uh, like so. Opens up. So you're ready to get dancing. tap. I don't know what it is, but we reach a point where, as human beings, we communicate up to a certain level with language, and then past that, we want to keep communicating. So, tap for me is um, a means of expression. I try and sing a song as much as I can.
generally speaking, in 4-4 four, four time, in common time, goes 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. Or 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a. We're all working within quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th triplets or 16th notes. Um, and past that, 32nd notes, 64ths, however fast you want to get. I think you learn through, through intuition um, and there's a very small amount of your dancing that you can actually control because it's a subconscious thing and it's a personality thing. Like in other words, your personality comes through when you're dancing. You know, um, if you're a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, if you're a relaxed kind of guy, that it emanates from you. And um, it, you know, Jimmy Slide's an example of that. Um, if you're a you know a bit darker and a bit more introspective, then you know um, that the energy is a bit more focused in and tends to be a bit more aggressive. fits in with the grid, it all sort of locks in together mathematically, which is what joins us as, as tappers and as musicians. If I start to put in accents um, on the six, within the first bar if I put an accent on the three, and in the second bar I put an accent on the one and the five, um, it sounds like I've slowed down, when in fact it's actually just an implied metric modulation, which sounds a little bit like this, so we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I start to put in the accents, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Take away the feet. This this starts to sound like twos and fours. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So there's little interesting things that I like to do and play with like that, little tricks um, that uh, you know musically are a bit different. <laughs> Since since Savion Glover and um, I remember just as a kid, you know, growing up and, and watching watching hit early footage of him and just being astounded and just being wanting to to figure out how that guy <laughs> screwed his head on. It's like climbing up a hill only to discover a mountain in front of you. Um, and um, you know, musically speaking, you know, music is endless. Accents go on forever. They live forever. You can just keep going. It's it's mathematically infinite. So um, 
really, uh, uh, it's it's an onwards, upwards, uphill climb to to really peak in this form. And and I think also that that you know we use the word peak liberally. Um, you know, there there is really no end to how musical you can become or how good you can become at something. It's just a question of really honestly woodshedding and putting in the time and uh, seeing what comes up. signature moves. It really takes an astonishing amount of technique to, to develop that and um, one of the things that I do is, is, is do it inside. Uh, I do an inside five and a sideways five um, just for the hell of it really. <laughs> right now or a scenario where I can go in and earn a living as, as, a, as a hoofer alone. There's a London Tap Jam at Ronnie Scott's. Um, there's um, a Brighton Jam which I have um, at the Brunswick which is a little jazz venue down by the sea. Um, and um, yeah, you'll find there's, there's very, very small pockets of it in the UK. We've got a hundred years of oral tradition in, in tap dance. So um, it's through the spoken word that this has been passed along. There's not really something that can can pin tap down or pin it, you know, or clarify this is what tap is. We don't have the Royal Ballet, the English National Ballet, you know, San Francisco Ballet, whoever it is. We don't have that. So um, uh, we don't have these giant companies to sort of, you know, pin a style on. It's 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 been through through word of mouth and through encounters that I've been inspired and then taking that and taking it upon myself to to find my own way. So it's you know it's part of the inspiration is, is meeting other people. I love tap dance because it lifts you. Makes you feel better about life. 